Good morning and welcome to worship with Ridgely Christian Church. It truly is a wonderful and beautiful day that God has made. As we continue to safely worship in our own places and spaces, we are still gathered together in one spirit. We would love to know that you are here participating in worship with us today. So please take a moment to say hello in the comments so we can say good morning to you. And if you feel comfortable, I invite you to share uh, this worship experience. If you're joining us on Facebook, share it to your own Facebook page as a form of sharing the good news with others. If you have one, I invite you to take a moment to light a candle to remind us all that God is present with us no matter where we are. And I also invite you to grab something you can use for communion elements, something to represent the bread and something to represent the cup so we can all participate in communion later in worship. A few things I would like to bring to your attention this week. First and foremost, VBS starts tonight, and I am so excited for Compassion Camp. VBS is Sunday through Thursday, starting at 5.30 every night on Zoom. This year's VBS is completely virtual. Kids ages 1 to 12 years old are invited to join us for Compassion Camp. We will learn through Bible stories, art, movement, games, and music, how to share God's compassion with ourselves and with our neighbors and our community and our world. So you can click on the link that is uh, in the uh, chat box right now to find out more because it's not too late for you to register. And don't forget, if you have already registered or when you register, to uh, pick up your Compassion Camp activity boxes from the church today uh, between 2 and 4 this afternoon. So again, we'd love to have you join us for Compassion Camp this week, a week of virtual VBS. Uh, make sure you are registered, and don't forget to stop by the church today to pick up your activity box from 2 to 4. I am also incredibly excited to announce a very special worship service next week. One Body, Many Parts is a special worship service of song and prayer led by Ridgely Community Christian Church and South Hills Christian Church. It has been such a blessing to get to partner with Community Christian Church and Bible study each week. We have learned so much about each other, about what it means to be human. We have had some wonderful and beautiful and holy and hard conversation about race, about reconciliation, and about what it means to seek justice, what it means to be the people of God, and what it means to live in love. I do hope that you will join us next week at 11 o'clock, our normal time for worship, for this very, very special worship experience. Again, you can join us on Zoom or Facebook Live for our One Body, Many Parts worship service. Now let us continue to be in a spirit of worship.
and our call to worship today, I encourage you to feel rooted. You can't see, but I am standing on the ground with my feet touching the floor. Feel rooted in your chair, on your couch, in your bed, or maybe stand up. Feel connected to the ground in which you are upon. As you worship, know that you are on holy ground wherever you may be. Feel rooted. Be connected to your holy ground. Be rooted in it. Be rooted in love and let that love, let the nutrients of love fill you. Now stretch. Stretch as you are able. Stretching can look many different ways. Grow into the space surrounding you. Taking the love that you are rooted in and letting it flow through you. Running out into the space you are in. Expanding. Growing. Feel that love that fills you and fills the space. And know that you are love. Will you please join me in singing God of Grace and God of Glory. And the responsive litany is found in the order of worship. Sometimes, God, we try to and stop others from doing what you call us to do. We interfere with other people's work for justice and righteousness. And we hamper their work for good in our world. When we put up stumbling blocks in front of ourselves and others, Forgive us, God, and help us to clear them away. Sometimes we cannot see what is in front of us. We put ourselves in the other way and do not see the present in our world. When we put up stumbling blocks in front of others and our, ourselves. Forgive us, God, and help us to clear them away. Sometimes we are at risk of losing our saltiness, the very essence that makes each one of us unique and makes us who we are, your special and beloved children. When we put up stumbling blocks in front of others and ourselves, forgive us, God, and help us to clear them away. Amen.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Morning, kids. Um, today we're talking about a woman named Esther in the Bible. And over the next few weeks, um, throughout the service, you're going to hear um, about several awesome women in the Bible and the cool things that they did. So in today's story, we hear about Esther. And Esther started off and she was just a regular person um, living in a kingdom. And then a, the king decided that he wanted a queen. And so he went and he searched all over and he fell in love with Esther. And so whenever he did, Esther went and became queen. But something that the king didn't know is that Esther was Jewish. And at that time and where they lived, um, people were really mean to anybody who was Jewish and they didn't like them and they just treated them really bad. So Esther decided not to tell the king that she was a Jew and so she went and she became queen and they lived and were having a good life and then one day a politician decided that he really didn't like the Jews and so he wanted all of them to die and so he went to the king and he told him his thoughts and the king didn't really have big opinions on it and so he decided that sure whatever that's fine and let the politician do what he wanted and so Esther whenever she found out about this was so conflicted because nobody knew that she was a Jew but all of the other Jewish people's lives were gonna be at risk. Um, and so she was, she was really just unsure what she was supposed to do. But then she talked to her cousin and her cousin said, Esther, don't think that you're safe just because you are queen. Maybe you are in the palace just so that you can save all of these people. Now, now is your time to be brave. Have you ever, have you ever had to be brave? Do you have any moments that come to mind when you were a little scared, but then you were really brave? Maybe you had to speak up or help someone that, that was in need. What does it feel like when, when you're faced with a really hard decision, when it would be easier to, to not do anything, but it's really important to, to be brave? Is it kind of scary? Are you sometimes afraid? But what does it feel like to be brave and to help somebody? Does that feel good? Well, in our story, Esther, she got up all of her courage and she was still really scared, but she decided to speak up and say, this isn't right. She explained to the king that she was a Jew and how horrible this law that was gonna allow Jews to die was gonna be. And the king listened to Esther and heard what she had to say and put a new law in place so that the Jewish people were protected. So it was all because Esther spoke up that she saved a whole lot of people. Sometimes, no matter how scary it is, we have to speak up and say things things aren't right and that 
they might hurt others. And perhaps like Esther, we're put in places so that because God knows that we can be brave and that we can speak up and that we can help our neighbors. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for brave people who stand up for their neighbors. And thank you for giving us the strength to be brave, even when it's scary. Amen. Dear God, we gather. In Esther's time, gathering was dangerous, but the Jews did so against injustice. Seeing her people gathered gave Esther the strength to stand against death and genocide. We gather in the ways we can to honor a tradition of righteous, difficult truth-telling that began before Christ. We speak up against racism, hate, and other injustices because perhaps we, too, were called to gather for just such a time as this. O oh God, hear our prayers as you heard Esther and her peoples. Care for us at home, in essential spaces, and wherever we may be, that our prayers are heard. Amen. We are constantly asking for the generosity of the church. We continue to ask because it's important. We are the church, each and every one of us coming together. And this is a way for us to give and make that church be, to show the world around us what the kingdom of God looks like. So today I ask you again to be generous with your offerings, to donate to the church so that we can continue to show the love and generosity that we have shown so far, so that we can continue to show up show up and be with the people around us, help the people around us, and to do good, just like Esther does for her mother-in-law, Ruth. You can give to this vision to help show God's love, either through check, you can send that directly to the church office, or by giving online at shelbygiving.com forward slash Ridgely. Thank you so much for your donation and the ways that you give whether that is just monetarily or showing up and volunteering and doing good and justice that way. On a typical Sunday in the summer, if you were to come into our church, it would be filled with people. There would be teenagers running all over this place, teenagers who have come from all over our country to come and stay here at our church, to come and share love, to come and do service and justice with our neighbors, to put our faith into action through service and justice, working with our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness or hunger or who are refugees or immigrants or who have experienced racism. But not this summer. We know that COVID-19 has made it where we can't have our trips here in person, but that has not stopped Ridgely's Connect Fort Worth ministry. This summer, we have been hard at work. In fact, just this past week, we have spent all afternoon on Zoom, every afternoon, every day of the week, with a church, Olivet Christian Church in Missouri. They have been learning about what it's like for children experiencing poverty, particularly right now, and how they can put their faith into action to care for kids in their own community who are struggling with poverty right this moment. Another way we've continued on our ministry is by our two interns, they're not able to work with groups who are here, so instead we've sent them out to be with our partners, to work with our partners each and every day to help our neighbors who are struggling right now. Today we're going to hear a story from Mark Dingler. Mark has spent his summer working with our partners at West Aid. West Aid is the food pantry where all the food we grow in our garden grows. West Aid is the place many of you have volunteered. I can't wait for you to hear about the ways that Mark has been putting God's love into action at West State and with our neighbors this summer. 
I have had the honor and the privilege of working with West Aid this summer, seeing the ways that they are showing God's love um, to the neighbors in need, both by um, the conversations that they have and the food that they are giving. Um, since the pandemic started, many of their volunteers were, none, were unable to come in um, every day like they had been, since most of them are retired at that. Um, and so they have had to come up with a completely new system to make this work for them so that they can continue to help the neighbor in need, um, but they can also continue to be safe as possible. Um, so they are, twice a week, um, spending time making grocery bags full of produce, of um, canned food, of pasta, of rice, and beans, um, all those dry goods. And then on the two other days a week, Wednesday and Friday, they give out food to the neighbor in need. Um, they add in on the, at that time some frozen meats, um, some nice drinks, some milk, some eggs, usually some cheese. Just kind of varies a little bit based on what they have in stock. Um, but they are continuing to show God's love and grace during this time um, when people are in need. Um, they're doing a great job of it, and I've had a great time working with them and seeing the ways that they are doing and showing God's love. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Church, please join with me in prayer today. Almighty God, we come before you with so many things on our mind and in our hearts. We ask first if you would grant us peace and grace as we work through these terrible times. But we all come together knowing that we truly are blessed to be children of you. And we're grateful for everything that we have. We share in our blessings in every which way we can. We're grateful for our ministers as they do your work to keep us healthy and strong. Please hear our prayer as we pray for your blessings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Will you please join me in singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
So, as many of you know, I have been spending my time in the pandemic at my house trying to serve and lead our church from my home while also raising a phenomenal almost two-year-old. As you can imagine, this has been filled with moments of joy and fun and also filled with lots of moments of chaos and exhaustion. I've been thinking a lot lately about what does it mean to find calm, to find peace in the midst of chaos. A parenting tip someone gave me early on was that when your child is out of control, when they have kind of hit their upper limits and are overwhelmed, you can either join them in your, their chaos or you can invite them into your calm. You can join them in their chaos or you can invite them in to your calm. On my better parenting moments, when my son's little mind is overwhelmed and filled up, I will come and sit beside him and invite him to join me in my calm. I'll take some deep breaths. I might sing one of his favorite slow songs. Maybe invite him to come sit on my lap or have a hug. And eventually, every time, he leaves his chaos and comes to join me in my calm. I've been wondering if that's what God has been inviting us into. Maybe we have been living in the chaos of this world right now, the fear, the overwhelming anger and hate and violence that's around us, and we've been overwhelmed in the chaos, and God is just sitting right beside us, inviting us to join God in God's calm to sit for a while in God's peace that passes all understanding, to enter into the brokenness of the world, not from a place of chaos, but from a place of God's peace, of God's hope, of God's unconditional love and grounding. If we can start from that calm, Imagine how we can then go out into the world and rather than joining the world's chaos, can invite the world to join us in God's calm. Our story today, we'll hear in our scripture the story of Esther. There is chaos all around her. There is violence and fear of violence and oppression from the government. And in the midst of it, Esther chooses a different way. She chooses a different voice. She chooses to walk with God and stand up for peace for all people. And eventually, the world joins her. And peace, love, not hate and violence have the final say. Today, friends, here at this table, Jesus is inviting us. Come, step away from the chaos for the world for a while, and come sit with me in my calm. Come sit in my peace for a moment. Come rest here at this table for a while. Get nourished, get filled up so that you can go back out into the world and join the world. Invite the world to join you in God's calm with us. That's what Jesus did on the night in the midst of chaos around him. Jesus invited his friends to sit for a while and to join them in his peace and his love. It was that night of the Last Supper, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, after he had given thanks, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant, a covenant of God's grace and love and peace poured out for all people. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do this in remembrance of him. Friends, this is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here. Come and feast on the goodness of God. Wherever you have taken communion, whatever elements you have used, God is with you and God loves you. 
and God fills you up with a peace that passes all understanding. In thanksgiving for that, let us turn now to God with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You were cold as the blood through your bones. And the light which led us from our chosen homes. Well, I was lost. And now I sleep, sleep the hours that I don't weep. When all I knew was steeped in black and I was lost. my 
eyes to serve and hands to learn. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes. Then he went through the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one dressed in sackcloth was allowed to enter the king's gate. As the king's order was posted in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and more of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the king, queen was deeply distressed, she sent fresh clothes to Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed to attend her and told him to go to Mordecai to find out the full story of what was happening. As it went out to Mordecai in the town square in front of the king's gate and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him. He told him the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury for the massacre of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa, ordering the massacre so that he could show it to Esther, explain it to her with instructions to go to the king and intercede and plead with him for her people. Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message for Mordecai saying, Everyone who works for the king here, and even the people out in the provinces, knows that there is a single fate for every person who approaches the king without being invited. Death. The one exception is if the king extends his gold scepter then that person may live. And it's been 30 days now since I've been invited to come to the king. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think that just because you live in the king's palace, you will escape any more than all the other Jews. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else but you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for just at such a time as this. Then Esther sent her reply to Mordecai. Go, gather all the Jews living in Susa together. Fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast with you. If you will do this, I'll go to the king, even though it's against the law. If I die, I die. Mordecai left to carry out Esther's instruction. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are in week two of our sermon series on women in the Bible. This week we are going to dive into the book of Esther. Esther is a young Jewish orphan who becomes the Persian queen. She and her cousin Mordecai rescue the Jewish people from the genocidal plot of Haman. And they all like to party a lot. <laughs> I love the story of Esther. I love the book of Esther. It is a unique and profound book in our Bible. We start at the beginning of Esther where the king has this feast 
a feast to show all of his power and his richness. And he calls his queen, Queen Vashti, to come, come, so all of the people can see her beauty. Well, Queen V says, nope, I am not going to do that. And guess what? This really upsets the queen, king that he said no to her. You know, the audacity of a woman to say no to the king. Uh, and she's banished. Then the king calls for a new queen to be presented to him and he basically holds a beauty pageant where Esther is then made a queen. Esther is an orphan who has been raised by her cousin Mordecai and she is part of the Jewish community but she hides her Jewishness as she enters this beauty pageant as she becomes the queen of Persia. Well, as the plot continues, we learn of Haman, the evil one, who develops this evil plot to kill all the Jews. Then Esther and Mordecai come up with this plan, and all of a sudden, Haman's evil plan is thwarted. But there was this decree that was already put in place, a decree that was to kill all the Jews. Well, they can't undo this decree but they come up with a new plan, a new plan to save the Jews, where the Jewish people can defend themselves from the enemy, from their enemies, and they do, and they triumph. This story of Esther is full of ir ironic reversals. We see people who are unexpected have changes in power and status. We see an orphan become the queen. We see the victims become the victors. All of these different characters in this story undergo unexpected change. People in power become powerless. There are so many different things we can lift up in Esther. And I think what I want to, us to start with is one of the big things that is important to note is that God is never explicitly mentioned in the book of Esther. So what do we do with that? What do we do with that idea that God is never mentioned? Uh, a lot of the Jewish traditions and prayers that you see in a lot of, of our, our books in the Bible, they're not there, they're not present. So why do we have this book of Esther? What is it gonna teach us about God if it never mentions anything about God or prayer or how to live our lives as a people of God. But that's where I push back. It does teach us how to live our lives as a people of God. So even though God is never mentioned, Esther gives us an opportunity, an invitation, if you will, to look for God's activity and see how we are called to do the work of God to see, to recognize that God may be unseen and unacknowledged, but God is still working. God works through us as human instruments to ensure the survival of God's people. In the book of Esther, human action is the key to achieving God's purposes in the world. And I think that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. We also find some really morally complex, morally ambiguous characters in this story. I, and I think we learn from these characters. Uh, we see these throughout all of the Bible though, right? God calling these, these unexpected people, these people who uh, would not necessarily be the first pick to be the leaders of hope, the leaders of trust, the leaders of the good news, but they're picked over and over again, I think as a reminder to us as as mere mortals, as the human beings we are in this world, that we don't have to be perfect to do the work of God. We do not have to be these righteous people to be the action of God's love in the world. So we learn all of these things from Esther, such, such a book full of rich ideas and uh, thinking about the actions that we are called to. 
As we are in the middle of a sermon series on women of the Bible, I do want to lift up two of the main women who are named in this book, uh, Queen Vashti. She says no, and she means no, regardless of the consequences. She is bold in her beliefs. Although she may not play a long role in this book, she plays an important one, setting the stage for being bold and for standing up for what you believe in. Then we meet Esther. Esther, who says these bold words of, if I die, I die. She says these words when she realizes that she has to save the Jewish community. She has to save her people. She has to speak up and go against the king. And it is a bold and dangerous thing for her to do. But she is brave and she knows it must be done. Both of these women teach us to be brave and to be bold. To stand up for our beliefs and also to take action. There was a show I was watching the other day um, where one of the main characters gives this great speech uh, that was potentially going to be her announcing her retirement, but she realizes she is not done yet. She's retiring out of fear, out of defeat. And in the middle of this speech, you see a shift. She talks about how she has always ran towards what she fears. Wow. What does it mean to run towards your fears? To not let them hold you back, but rather to use them as inspiration to do the work you are called to do. And then she says, basically, I'm running towards my fears. I have a lot of fears about the future and the unknowns, but I am still here and I am still committed to this work. It's easy to live in fear or comfort or maybe even like self-doubt. Feeling like you're not enough. But God is calling us to live fully and faithfully. These examples in the story of Esther teach us to live boldly and to be brave. And that we must act. Probably one of the most famous verses in this story is perhaps you were made for a time such as now. Maybe the time doesn't feel right. Maybe the setting is not what we expected. Maybe, but just maybe, we were made for this very time right now. We were made to live fully into the God, into the people, into the community that God is calling us to be part of, to do, to create. We are to do hard things. We are to seek God working in the midst of what can feel like a very hopeless time. I wonder how is God encouraging you to be brave, to be bold, and to take action. I wonder, how can you stand up and say, yes, the time is now. What are you being called to do in this very moment, this very unexpected time that you are living in? Are you being called to say yes or maybe no to something? Maybe you are being called to stand up and to speak truth 
Maybe you are being called to do the very hard work that is anti-racism work. Maybe you are being called to be a voice, an advocate for your community, for the people in your community. Maybe you are being called to respond to a need that you see. This week, some of our youth responded to a need they saw. They served at a night shelter and realized and wondered a while back, this was a while back, they saw this, they realized and wondered, what, what about bedding for people? Where do they get bedding from? And you know what they did? They acted. They collected bedding for human beings to have somewhere soft and comfortable and safe to sleep. And they donated it this week. And how beautiful is that to take action now? You don't always have to be the best. You don't have to always feel like the time is just right, but I tell you the time is now to be brave and to be bold and to take action. God needs you now. God is calling you now to live out the love that is needed in this world to take compassion, which is love and action, and live that out in your life and in your community. See the needs that are around you and respond. Hear the cries of the people. Know that the work is hard, but God is with you. Because you know what? You were made for a time as this. Be brave, be bold, and take action. Amen. I want to invite you to be part of Ridgely Christian Church. I want to invite you to intentionally say yes to being part of this community. Maybe you have been worshiping with us for a while. Maybe you stumbled across worship today, but I invite you to be part of us and living out the good news in the world. If you would like to find more out about our beliefs, about our practices, our traditions, more about our church and the ministries, I invite you to send an email to office at ridgelychristian.org or feel free to send us a message on our Facebook page, uh, on our YouTube channel, or on Zoom. Uh, we would love to tell you more about this amazing community and we would love for you to be part of it. Will you please join me in singing, My Hope is Built? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when darkness fails his lovely face I rest upon unchanging grace in every high and stormy i
Friends, you were made for a time as this. I wonder how is God working in your life and encouraging you to be brave and be bold and encouraging you to take action, to help fill this world with compassion and to live out the good news, not only in your life, but in the community and in the world. Be filled with the peace and love of God. Amen.